I mean, before I think before you got on, Jenna, about just powering through the book. We have three chapters left. It's approximately like 92 pages or something like that. No, it's less than that even, right? 75. That's what um, it is. Okay. And then I could uh, send our email this week about the new book. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. I like it as well. Well, okay, I'll share the screen then. Let's see. Share my screen. Not my email. Let's see here. There it is. Hopefully this isn't too choppy for you guys. I know on the record, uh, sometimes I see it being kind of choppy, but all right. So we read 13, 14, and 15. Um, Dream it and do it. My Marty Spar last last three or next week. So the chapter 13 here I had a um, I don't know if it's, it's, it's on the quote I love, but it was funny anyway. It says, October 1 has never been the problem. 1982 is the problem. So it was written September 8th, 1981. And so they're trying to get something open. I think it was like something in Disney Paris. And um, yeah, they said October 1 is not the problem, just the year that's the problem. Um, they also said uh, there's, a good, a good, there's a lot of good quotes. Fantasyland is our company, which it mm -hmm. literally is our company, so... Um, that thought that was funny. And one more. Remember, every day is the only day many of our guests will ever visit one of our parks, which we've heard in different variations throughout our entire careers at Disney. So that's pretty cool. Um, so scouting for Euro Disney was underway, and France was chosen as a location due to the access to a rail line provided by the government and approximately to 30 million residents and or tourists from around uh, Paris and other locations around there. The Euro Disney project or Disneyland Paris was called a cultural Chernobyl as many of the ideals of the Disney park didn't necessarily mesh with the French society. Um, they're more expressive, I'm guessing, is, you know, and they were gonna have to be asked to not have tattoos and not have, you know, all of our Disney look stuff slash like all of the dumbing down of some of the history we do, the French would have thought that would be a cultural Chernobyl, but I think it worked out because it, a lot of people visited it, so it obviously wasn't that. Um, Eddie Soto came into Marty's office and pitched Mission Space, and it was a huge hit. Um, he uses that story to talk about um, how important an open door policy is, which I could not be more agreeing on. I actually believe on a walking the floor policy more than an open door policy. Um, hopefully, and we don't even have doors, like I always like to tell our cast. Um, Teresa does, but she never closes it. Uh, Frank Steinberg came in and identified some serious problems with construction of Disneyland Paris and evaluated needing more money and Imagineers while promising to keep to the budget. And they didn't even have construction plans at this time, which is just crazy. So this was, wasn't going well, wasn't uh, doing great until Frank came on and um, sort of put everything back together. Um, I did love the story about Skip Lane, the rockwork guy, who stood up to the managers saying he should be in charge of the rockwork and have no more oversight as he was the rockwork expert. He was then granted his anonymity with the caveat that he was going to get all the blame and credit. This is one of those uh, be careful what you wish for things, mm -hmm. um, especially in leaders, whatever we complain about will no doubt be um, charged with then fixing. So just be careful to uh, make sure that we don't um, Ask for that. Let me stop this video real quick. Let's see here. Let's stop the share. It's a little shorter than I thought. Um, let's see. Yeah, so always be careful what you um, complain about because, again, you may have to be in fact in charge of fixing it. Um, that has happened to me many times. Uh, talking about Disney Sea, really wanted me to to make that my next destination. I wanted to even show you guys a video, but there was not a good one. But Disney Sea sounds tremendous, and I think Jenna, you'll have to talk to us a little bit about that. Since I, you were the one that's been there, right? No, I've no, never been. Who's Jessica, who's Jessica's been there? I was planning a trip, but I decided against Nobody's it. Nobody's actually been there in my group right now. We should all go. Uh, DCA underdevelopment is addressed by Sklar, um, and it was addressed by Iger. Though the underdevelopment and lack of creativity in Hong Kong does seem disappointing to me. Sklar is also disappointing in Disney Quest 
underachieving, which I, I said that as a shout out to Jenna because he was also disappointed in Disney Quest not taking off like he thought it would. I uh, thought it was so funny that I was in the chapter right after we talked about yeah, it. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I'm going to write this in just for Jenna. Disney <laughs> Quest was disappointing. Um, yes, yeah, so that's a little bit of the uh, breakdown there. What, I don't know. Let's see where I wrote down first. Let's start with Judy. What did you think, Judy? Congratulations. Thank you. Um, so the first chapter we read was honestly, it was kind of boring, but at the same time, it makes sense. They needed that pinnable board because they, that, that meeting room was always a serious meeting room. Um, for the second chapter, it's, it's interesting in everything that happened. And I love how they talked about, you know, the story of Disneyland Paris and how it all came full circle. Um, in the chapter, he mentions that they wanted those square trees, which had involved an artist who inspired. It just, I don't remember exactly, but it was basically full circle. And I thought I loved how they used what was around them. You know, they have so much history, but they also had modern history to inspire them for the park. And then also towards the end of that chapter, it was interesting to finally see Marty's actual but not outright opinion between CEOs um, because he did mention that early 2000 era where build it small and build it cheap and what happened as a result and how he was basically praising the great job Iger was doing at the time and had planned to do to improve all those parks and all those cheap and small creations that you know it's it turned around you know the, the first and only one that I was thinking because I only have experience with that is California Adventure and it you when you went into California Adventure before the food refurbishment it looked like that saying build it small and build it cheap because it was who wanted to spend half a day well and he mentions it too in the book same ticket price not even half the attractions like what that's mm, so when it was refurbished, and I'm guessing a lot of the other attractions and a lot of other theme parks were or are being refurbished to, you know, get at Disney's caliber and the Disney brand. So I, it was interesting to see, you know, Marty actually have an opinion between the CEOs. And again, it was subtle, but you could tell, like, despite the respect he had for Eisner and his creativity and passion. It was Iger's leadership that he respected more than, you know, creativity. Um, speaking of creativity, it's not surprising that it's disappointing, but not surprising that Eisner's idea wasn't received well for Tokyo Sea. So he's like, eh, all right, well, I'm over it. Let's focus on Disney Paris now. You know, it's just like, you're the CEO, everyone looks to you to create that brand and the fact that, you know, but at the same time, again, you don't have video of it, but the way Marty described Disney C sounds magical. And that's because the Imagineers didn't have Eisner to be down to you know, look over their shoulder and be like, oh, this is how I want it, this is how I envision it. So they were able to use their imagination and their actual talent as true Imagineers to create something great, you know? So that was kind of on par for Eisner, but at the same time, you know, knowing that people were gonna be comparing your legacy and this is how you chose to react when one of your quote unquote great, great ideas wasn't received well, you know? it's. Kind of disappointing. Um, chapter, what is it, 15? I lost my page. I don't remember chapter 15, so I'm done. <laughs> I um, no, I, I I'm sure you guys have all had to sign people in and hey, which park do you want to go to first? Disneyland. You're like, I actually DCA is pretty good. No, no, Disneyland. You're like, <laughs> you have to like talk them into it. And it's like it's not like it used to be. People, it's it's okay now. You can you can spend eight hours there now. It's it's actually okay. Um, yeah, poor poor DCA. They get such a bad rap. 
but it's a decent park now, people. It's way <laughs> off of it. Yeah. Tiger fixed a lot. Um, it still could use a nice marble land. I, I will say, I know we've had this discussion, but Bugs Land is, was, was met its time, let's put it that way. Uh, Jessica. I agree that Bugs Land had met its time. I still miss it because <laughs> of <laughs> my childhood, but that's okay. I agree that we have to keep moving forward. Um, <laughs> so our sign of the week is going to be restaurant. Um, so you have the R. And then you put it on one side of your chin and then the other. So restaurant, restaurant. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of similar to restroom because restroom is right in front of you. We got restaurant. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to change that. I didn't do that research as I should have because um, it's the initialized sign, which is what a lot of ASL is trying to move away from of using the same letter because this is the R in the restaurant. So they're trying to get rid of using letters to kind of make it more of a sign that represents it instead of being connected so much to the English language. I'm um, not sure if that's going to change, but that's what I learned. So for the chapters, I also wrote down that um, every day may be the only day many of our guests will ever visit our parks because I think, especially in our park, we forget that a lot because um, we have so many pass holders. And so we think everyone who comes through our door is a pass holder and they know everything and you can just give them a little brief like, oh, you know, such and such, you're going to go left there. But you may have guests who have never been there before, and they're like, I don't know what that is. So using more descriptive landmarks or, like, you see a giant whale, and then you're going to turn right, or kind of making sure to try and keep it as magical as possible because we don't guess, want guests to walk away and not feel that magic because we just assume everyone's a pass holder. Um, so I do love that quote. I also love um, Randy Posh. I don't know if I'm saying his name right, but I love at the end of chapter 15 when it's, um, it's not about how to achieve your dreams. It's about how to lead your life. If you lead your life the right way, the karma will take care of itself. The dreams will come to you. I just, I really like that quote. I think it's, it really talks about living your life kind of to the fullest and making sure to really take the time to do things properly and correctly and then it'll work out how it's supposed to work out because i don't know if you know his story at all but um i think we talked about it a little bit in bob Iger's book um he did the last lecture series and he tried to be an imagineer i want to say three times and he got denied every time and then he finally got accepted to be an imagineer and got to do really cool magical stuff i forget what projects he worked on but it was it's all about pursuing your dream and just keep working and figuring out how to better yourself and then it'll work out how it's meant to work out so I love that quote and then just the fantasy land is our company I like that one too um, which puts a little bit more pressure on us being in fantasy land um, because uh, the magic and all of that is so important and that's why I'm excited for where we're moving forward within our area um, and how it'll bleed into the rest of the park and just kind of the cool example that we're setting with that that's my gap. <laughs> Hopefully sooner rather than later. We, yeah. We don't know uh, all the budgetary stuff on that yet, but I, I know we're still going to do it because it's needed. It's, it's Yeah. It's, 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 I mean, it's, a lot of the money has sort of already started going into it. We just have to, you know, do the second part. Do it. <laughs> well, and uh, Jenna, what, how, what, how do you feel about these chapters? Uh, there's a lot of good stuff. I really liked the quote wall. Um, the the quotes that stood out to me were definitely the same ones that all of you mentioned, but the one other one that I really liked was you can't test a Disneyland without a Disneyland. Because I think there are times where, for me in particular, I really like the research. I really like to like take the best educated guess. I want to know like the facts behind it, but Sometimes you got to just take the risk and see what happens. And that, that's definitely something that bugs me. If somebody says, well, I have an idea. And I'm like, but I don't think it's going to work. Because, like, they can't tell me the facts. But if something like that never existed before, like, the facts don't exist. You have to have it happen first. So I, I just really like that concept of um, you got to let it happen. Uh, and then for Disneyland Paris, I did think it was interesting that uh, there was so much culture, culture clash from what they were saying, because from being inside Disneyland Paris, they definitely have wine. <laughs> and I don't know when that, when they, the company as a whole decided, I'm wondering if that was an Iger thing, if he went against uh, Eisner's theory of no alcohol, and he was the one that put alcohol in the park. I really don't know who, when that, when we decided to change that 
rule around or when California Adventure then got alcohol either. I, I don't know. Or did it open with it? Do you know? I don't know. Oh, I mean, uh, I'm guessing it was just the same this DCA probably. Yeah, probably. But the, but yeah, because there's the other parks from hearing, um, different people when they went over to, um, Asia to open up, uh, I had, there was like two people that I knew that went over there to help open up one of the parks. But anyways, when they came back, they talked about so much about trying to make sure the culture was represented within the company. So I feel like in a sense, the company learned as a whole from Paris, because I didn't know that whole story that we were trying so hard to say, here's how we want to do it. And Paris was clashing against it. Cause I do think we've changed that a little bit, obviously not with Disney look. And there's a few other things that we kept, but I do think we have tried to incorporate other cultures much more than us trying to come in and say, we're Disneyland and this is how we're doing it. So I thought that story was interesting. And I liked hearing his take on Eisner right after reading Bob Iger's book, where we hear from Iger's perspective, everything that happened. And then um, I do think that Marty kind of agreed with with Iger in some way, shape, or form, that Eisner did really well up until the end, where either the thinking got skewed with the "let's do it cheap," I don't know. But I did think that was interesting seeing both perspectives. Yeah, no, I agree. I I, uh, I think it makes us all appreciate Iger a little more, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is it, it is interesting how we did that. Now we're gonna learn about like the early years of Walt in the next book, right? Is that correct? Uh, the next book, go yes, it's the very early years of Walt, but it goes through like his entire life and then the leadership lessons. So it's kind of, it's about the parks, but it's also about leadership. It's like 50-50. So we're going back in time every time we do a book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> I think it's also interesting how much money they poured into Disneyland Paris, and it's still considered one of those build it cheap, build it small sort of ideas. Because the, I think it was more in the like architecture and maybe yeah. the making it pretty that they poured so much money into it. But I know it's one of those parks that people wouldn't even put on their bucket list because they thought it was worth going to. Uh, the entrance to Disneyland Paris is gorgeous. So I thought it was interesting that you're talking about how, how much time and energy they spend making because that, that's something that stood out to me because it was really pretty. And you did feel get that like warm feel. And when I went, it was like about 35 degrees outside. So it was cold. Yeah. But you feel that walking in. So I really did like that whole piece of it. But the part that is cheap is um, Holly, their version of Hollywood Studios. Mm -hmm. It's not... It's not Disney like I immediately like was like embarrassed to see it they even put the partner statue in front of Hollywood Tower of Terror which was kind of strange because they said that was American and then they have like this really like cheap backdrop for lack of a better way of saying it that just says Hollywood over Mickey so you feel like you're in America like it's just so weird like like but when I was there they were doing a lot of construction to fix it yeah. which was probably about 2014, I think is when I went. They're also adding on to it. So they're going to do like a frozen land. And I want to say they're also putting Marvel there, but I'm not sure. They're like expanding and doing new areas. Yeah, it's needed. Hollywood Studios was, was it, it, I didn't feel like I was just in Disney there. The Disneyland of Paris, like, was kind of like a time warp because it's the exact same layout as Disneyland. So I was standing like in the middle of time, in uh, Times Square, in the middle of where our partner statue is, because for wow. them, it's and it, it, you feel like you're in a different world because, like, in a weird dream, because Plaza is right where Plaza is, and Tomorrowland is right where Tomorrowland is, but everything just says something slightly different, and the castle is right where it should be, but it's just slightly different. Yeah. <laughs> so it's very interesting. Hmm. I also thought that there was like that weird discussion about the hotel entrance being right next to the exit entrance for Disneyland Paris. Mm -hmm. How yeah. does that feel in practicality? Actually, I really like that. I thought it was really, it was really cute because they have it extremely well themed. Um, I can't really, like Fantasyland themed, I guess is the best way of saying it, but they have like a big time clock on the front of like the hotel. So you mm -hmm. kind of feel like you're just like in the Disney village, like walking in, but it's because it's so well themed that um, I actually like the hotel where it was. 
It was just Hollywood Studios. That was the one thing about Disneyland Paris that I, I just did not. Like Ratatouille ride was very cute. Like anything that was new was really cute, but you could see immediately the new thinking versus old thinking. So there's just parts <laughs> of the park that were just yikes. Like I think um, the the whatever we call it now, the Hollywood Studios in art in Florida is actually usually everybody's worst park as well. It's definitely mine. Like I I like all three of the other ones pretty equally, and then I'm like Hollywood Studios. Yeah. Have you been there since they did the Toy Story Land? No. And the Star Wars? Okay. Because I went before that too, and I thought the same thing. Like, it was a half day or that, like, mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't Their go Their Tower of Terror is, like, amazing and the only thing to do, really. I and don't do rock rides. Yeah. Too. <laughs> yeah. Well, in the Indiana Jones, I guess there's three things. The Indiana Jones, okay, I'll give them the Indiana Jones. The stunt <laughs> Yeah, that was cool. It was almost like what the original, like, concept was. Like, let's show how movies are made, you know, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I find it interesting to see what gets adopted into different parks and like which park it goes to. Because they were talking about how that stunt show came from Paris, which I didn't even know. And then they dropped into Hollywood Studios. So it's really interesting to hear which park had it first and then where it went after that. Yeah. I, I think um, Cars is not replicated. The Radiator Racer Springs is not replicated anywhere else either, right? Uh, Disneyland Paris has a backdrop. They have a backdrop? Uh, I, can, I, I gotta find the photos. I had to take, because at the time, for us, Cars Land just opened. Mm -hmm. So when I went over there, or it was open for like two years. So when I went over there, like we were like, oh, look, at they have like a Cars Land on the map. We have to go see it. And it was... <laughs> it was... I think they're adding new rides in now, if I remember right. I think that's one of the upgrades that they were going to start. They put in like the Tomato ride, or I, I forgot what it was, but they were putting, or Luigi's, that's what it was. They were putting in Luigi's. Um, but the, they have a, um, the Cozy Cone was like the size of my hand. Like, <laughs> it was just, it wasn't, it's not, we, the whole time we were in Hollywood Studios in Paris, we just laughed. Like, it was just, <laughs> Like I said, Ratatouille was super cute. That's the one thing in the area that we were like, wow, they did a really nice job, but that was the brand new ride. <laughs> so, in Finding Nemo, the, right, the wait time for that was 200 minutes. So I never saw that one because we weren't going to wait. Um, so I don't know how that was. Their Tower of Terror is the exact same one that we had in California Adventure. Um, before, obviously, they switched it over, but it's the exact same one. There's no change to it at all. Um, and there, but Disneyland Paris, like the way they set it up, like the actual Disneyland Paris is, is gorgeous. Like it's really pretty. The, the ar architecture is really well done. The hedge maze is very cool. Pirates of the Caribbean, like the, their costumes, they literally legit look like they just walked out of the movie. Like their costumes were amazing. Cool. I've heard it's a very pretty park and they have the dragon, which I really want to see. <laughs> That sounds really cool. All right, are you guys in agreement? Should we do all the chop, all the rest? Let's yeah. finish it off. Yeah. It's do it. Two ninety two to three sixty eight, so seventy six pages. It's not too bad. Has like documents and stuff in it too. That yeah. yeah. And there's a little bit. Of, I don't know if the pictures count. For pages. The pictures aren't counted in the page count because I, I checked that. <laughs> well, at least I'll have an easy slideshow for you guys this week. <laughs> 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 it's much easier than actually finding a YouTube video. All right. Well, that sounds good to me. Does anybody else want to share anything? Wonderful. Okay, I'm also going to send out the email about the new book as well this week. I keep forgetting the name, Jenna. Help me out. Uh, how to be like Walt. That's it. Why is that? That's easy to remember. <laughs> I think I would, but I haven't. All right, how to be Are like Walt. Are and Teresa still working? Do you guys know more than I do on that? I'm not, I know she was last week. She's That's working from hey, I do know Yeah, okay. that. So yeah, she's still working, but I don't know anything else. <laughs> no. It's just, it's, you know, good 
good to know that they're still there because there's hope that we'll go back soon. I don't know, man. This is like baby again after Hong Kong today, but we'll see. I know. And then Florida is having more cases. I bet they're going to shut down again soon. So. Are you kidding? It's Florida. <laughs> Florida won't shut down. <laughs> I don't know why, but I feel like if if they if they successfully opened, we would have opened sooner. But then their cast members over there, like there's so much that's coming out. Like, did you see the video of the girl who picked up the duck? No. no. Oh, that makes so much. Huh? No, no. She like picked up the duck and then had people pet the duck. What? No. And she did a TikTok <laughs> about it. She put it on TikTok and was like. She picked up the duck and she's like, I'm here for the ducks. And then like, uh, it was during the cast member preview. And so people were petting this duck and I'm just like, no. My cousin was hospitalized for four weeks because uh, when she was like 12, because she decided to take care of a baby duck and they had gave her some weird disease that she literally was hospitalized for four weeks. After that, like, you, ugh, you just don't touch that stuff. It's no. They're wild animals, and we all like protect them. <laughs> no, they're, they're very cute. Kids run around now for them. But they're but very they're cute. Mm -mm. Oh. Well, the uh, the one day we were opening Plaza Inn, and this the literally the rope dropped. Like the guests weren't even in the park, and it wasn't even a busy day where we they're like you know they're kind of trying to rush. Like it was like super chill. The rope dropped. We're not even like technically really open yet. The very first guest. Uh, comes up with her eight-year-old daughter and her eight-year-old just picks off this mama duck <laughs> and the entire rest was like put the duck down <laughs> and then we had to like apologize for yelling at her because we're like we all felt so bad because we all immediately had the same reaction and her mother's like well it's just a duck we're like what are you doing <laughs> oh jeez oh, yeah. Easy people. All right. Well, I guess I'll see you guys the same time next week then. Sounds good. Sounds good. Same right. time, same place. <laughs> All right. In last chapters. All right. See you guys soon. Yep. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.